Remember, this video is part of a video sequence converging the high simulation of the chemical distribution in toluene's hydroxylation to produce benzene. A link is available below. So now that we know how much feed do we need, right, to meet the specifications of the product in stream S3, our next goal is to simulate an ideal separation. Remember that we are distributing the, chemi the chemicals in the uh, process flow diagram in HISIS. We are not dealing with any energy balance, it's just material balance. So a component splitter allows us to separate components. This is not a split, uh, a splitter or a T. This is actually uh, a, comp uh, a splitter, right, that tells me, or yeah, uh, uh, an ideal separation that I indicate exactly how much and which material is going to go on the tops or the bottom of the unit. So we're going to go uh, and do the first uh, ideal separation where we're going to separate hydrogen and methane from the uh, components coming from S3. Probably if you do a design on your own, you need to decide the separation strategy that it is proposed right in the block flow diagram. So in this particular case, we start by understanding the volatilities and the vapor liquid equilibrium and liquid liquid equilibrium diagrams in order for us to propose a separation strategy. Right now, what I'm presenting is just the volatility, so we are not sure if there's going to be any astrotropes or interactions, but at least this gives us an idea of which components should go in the top and in the bottoms from the splitters, right? This ideal separation block that we're going to add into the block flow diagram. Remember that the first uh, step is to remove hydrogen and methane. So they're going to go on the top and then the rest of the components are going to go in the bottom stream. The other thing about having the boiling points is that it gives, gives you a sense later on the ranges of temperatures that you're going to be working with. Also notice that in the block flow diagram, there's no proposal of removing hydrogen from, uh, from methane. And that is an important thing. Notice that the um, separation of hydrogen and methane should occur at very low temperatures. So we are trying to avoid that, right? Thinking that, well, if we avoid to do that and it doesn't, um, you know, bother the reaction or anything, uh, we, we can save a little bit of money on the separation, right? Because we are skipping one separation uh, in the process. Once again, this is a preliminary block flow diagram. If this is your project, you may need to optimize this. It may be the best thing to do is actually uh, remove and send back pure hydrogen uh, into the process. There's a lot of heuristics involved that I'm not going to discuss right now, but we're going to be discussing that in um, other uh, trainings in the future. So once again, the hydrogen and the methane will go together. Notice that methane is a byproduct. So that means that we need to add a purge and that's what is you have a purge in your block flow diagram. Let's continue. If you were in the board book, you can always come back here to the main flow sheet. The first thing we will do is to add the first separator and the first recycle to remove the light gases. In this case, will be hydrogen and methane. We will not add any real unit right now because our goal is to distribute the chemicals and simplify the convergence of the PFD. We, we are very systematic on the way we'll build our uh, uh, whole, this, uh, whole process flow diagram. Designing the real separations requires us to modify temperature and pressure and handle the heat balance equation and and we are focusing, but however, we are focusing right now on the mass balance at this point or uh, of the distribution of the chemicals. So for now, right, for each separation, what we're going to uh, do is add what we call a component splitter. So you can come here to separators and here you will have something called component splitter. You can click that, add it here on the top, right? Remember, we labeled this L fake and there's no flow coming uh, through that stream. I can double click this. So with a component splitter, a material fit stream is separated into two component streams based on the parameters and split fractions that you need to you specify. So we as a user know which component are going to go into the different streams. You must specify the fraction of each feed component that exists the, exists the component splitter into the overhead product stream. 
use it to approximate the separation for proprietary and non-standard separation processes that are not handled elsewhere in HISIS. So in this particular case, uh, we are trying to put something right that mimics what we expect the separation will be. Uh, remember that all of these process simulators, they work with the best initial guesses. So we are trying to be as close as possible uh, to the separation that we think will happen. Uh, so when we add the real separation, it's close to the value that it will be separated. However, uh, it may be devi deviated, right? Because uh, the regular separations are not ideal. Anyways, let's go back here. Remember, you can always come back to go to help and it will show you exactly all the theory behind this blog. So I honestly recommend you to just read it and get familiarized on what is the mathematic behind it. So here we're going to add, we're going to name it to be consistent with our plan. Uh, this is going to be CS1. The inlet stream is S3. Notice why is useful to have L fake? We know that we don't need to use it. The overhead here, we're going to continue again with our um, simulation plan. Then we're going to add the bottom stream, S5. I'm going to move this to the side so you can notice how the streams were added for you. going to come back here. So energy streams, once again, it says that it's it's kind of optional, but it's not. We know that we need an, an energy duty, right, to do the separations in the future. So what we're going to do is add here CS1 duty. Sometimes when you do like a one stage separation, like a decanter, a flash tank, they may occur adiabatically. So that means that you don't need to keep the unit at a specific temperature. So it may vary, but for now, uh, we're just going to call it SA1 duty because it doesn't hurt to calculate how much energy will require. And what I'm going to go back is to design and actually focus on the splits. To specify the splits, right, we here have what we call the type uh, of the, the type of split that you're going to do. There's multiple of them. You know, there's f ways to do uh, filters. So here, what we're going to do is look at the feed fraction to products, right? So how much of the feed for that particular component is going to go into the product stream, which is the exit stream. So I know that all of my hydrogen is going to go in S4, which is the stream on the top. So I'm going to uh, type here one. That's how much 100% is going to go into that stream. 100% of the methane is going to go into that stream. And then you can specify the bottoms. Okay. You can specify here. And if you specify here, how much, if one is going to go of benzene in S5, automatically this side will be calculated. I'm going to do that just for you to see it. Okay, notice that because I added this, automatically S4 will be calculated for you. It doesn't matter, right, where you specify. Just I just want to try to be consistent, especially because I want to know exactly what things were user specify. I'm just going to do this zero. It's zero, right? Only hydrogen and methane are going to go in the top. So now the next thing is to specify the overhead pressure. Right now we're not worrying about the temperature and pressure, we need to do what we call case studies, uh, case studies to identify what are the optimum temperature and pressure conditions for the separations after we decide what type of separations we're going to use to do that separation. So uh, right now I'm just going to keep this constant. So it's going to be 1268 pressure for 69 PSIA and the same thing, right, for the exit, notice this numbers are not the final numbers because we're just dealing with the material balance uh, to converge the whole PFD to distribute the chemicals. Where are they going? Then later we're going to do case studies and uh, identify this optimum conditions and go back and optimize it. Okay, but for now we're going to leave it like that. Notice that the splitter is completely converged. Okay, so now following the block flow diagram, the next thing that we're going to do, right, we're going to focus on stream four or S4, uh, is that is to add a splitter or a T, and then we're going to add a recycle. But let's add a splitter. A component splitter is different than a splitter or a T. Okay, so component splitter focus on moving 
one particular component into a specific stream, exit stream versus a splitter or T, just distribute the exit stream, right, uh, in similar amounts or different amounts, right? So you basically split the uh, mass flow or the molar flow into uh, multiple streams. So it's different because the composition in a splitter will be the same before and after, but in a component splitter will not. Okay, from the in inlet to the exit. So you can always go to the help and uh, check out the mathematics behind it. So to do that, what we're gonna do is to come here to all, and you have a mixer and you have a T or a splitter. Gonna put it here. And then here, I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna call this S1-1. The inlet is S4. I'm gonna put this down so you can see how the um, streams are added. We're gonna add H2 hydrogen feed to recycle. Okay, you can put whatever name. This is the name that I decided to use. Then we're gonna have a purge. Before I add the split, I, I want you to, to notice that this splitter is pointing in, the, pointing in the wrong direction. So what you can do is come in here to modify flow sheet and you can do rotate. Okay. Notice that as I click here, rotate is rotating to the, to the right side clockwise. Okay. You can rotate one more if you want. Okay. And if you do that, notice that the purge is pointing to the right direction, but the feed is not. You can touch here the, I'm sorry, uh, but the hydrogen is not. So you can flip the hydro hydrogen horizontally, right? And that will be later connected to the uh, recycle, right? That we're gonna connect here to the feed. Um, so right now, uh, the purge is on the right direction. So we have to come here to the uh, split and identify the sp splits. To do that, go to parameters. And we need here to decide the purge ratio that we're gonna add. This is hard to do without any optimization at this point. I suggest that you start with a 75% of the flow coming into the T to go to the purge. We will optimize this uh, later if, if you need to know how much is it. So 75% is a good starting point to start converging. And the reason why I'm doing 75% is that I want um, a small amounts going in the recycle stream. I mean, this is completely arbitrary. I'm just using that number based on the numbers that I, I use to converge these type of flow sheets, but it may be less, right? So at the end of the day, you need to do an optimization on the ratio, right? How much um, of the inlet stream to that splitter should go back to the recycle versus how much is being purged. Remember that valuable reactant is being lost in the purge, but at the the same time you want to remove some of the methane so the system is operated under steady state conditions so it's a um, an optimization that you have to do but for now what we're gonna do is use 75 percent you can come here to the worksheet and you can see the mass flow and I'm calculating uh, basically 45, 12 point, um, that I, 45, uh, 13 times 0. 0.75 is around 303, uh, 303 is around 3,384 pounds per hour. So what we're going to do is send that amount to the purge and the rest will go to the recycle. So I'm going to put here in the purge 384 going into the purge. And notice that automatically the rest of the numbers are calculated for us. Okay. The other thing that I want you to notice is that this is operating isothermally and isobaric. So um, you don't need to input that. Only the splits. And the split in this particular case is the amount of mass divided in the splitter, which is different from the split in the component splitter. Okay. So these are very common mistakes that students do. So make sure that you are clear what, how to use it and when to use it. Let's save it.